Hi everyone, welcome to welcome session 1. I, Gavindip Kaur, is going to represent a topic photosynthesis in this session. So let's begin. So here you can see a ball full of colorful chits. So let's play one game. So this is an icebreaker activity named as the chits game. So here in this activity, every student will pick their favorite kind of multicolored chits from the ball. They will pass around the ball and ask students to take at least one or two if they wish to do so. Once the ball of chits has been passed around, each person has to answer the question for each color they take. The questions assigned for each color chits are like, the first question is why do flowers make us happy? So children have to speak at least for at least 30 seconds or for one minute. For instance, for me, flowers have the power to brighten our day. Even in the darkest of times, because of their beautiful colors, magnificent scents, and flowers unknowingly relax us. The second question, it can be in any of the chits, it is, do flowers have emotions? If someone asks me, so according to me, since plants do not have central nervous system, it is said to be impossible for them to have emotions and the ability to reason or feel. The next question is, the plants turn towards the sun. So they have to give their point of view for the statement, plants turn towards the sun. For instance, by turning towards the sun, plants are taking care of themselves. Likewise, for our mental well-being, it's important that we have a positive outlook on life. It also means surrounding ourselves with people who build us up. Next question is plants move at their own pace so here it means that plants react to the world around them but they always move at their own pace their own speed sometimes we want plants to grow faster but ultimately they are the ones who dictate the speed the last one what life lessons can flowers or plants teach us so according to me we all are unique and have different needs we cannot please everybody some may want you to do things differently or at a different pace, but ultimately, you need to be true to yourself. Move at a speed that will improve your well-being. So plants teach us patience. Let's be thankful for plants and the valuable lessons they teach us. Whether grown indoor or outdoor, plants do us a world of good. So hence, these questions will be shuffled in these threads. Hence, this activity will be really helpful for enhancing the communication skills of the students. It will give a chance to everyone to speak for at least few minutes in the class and to share their creative ideas. Students will also learn to encourage each other to speak and will learn to appreciate the ideas shared in the class. So now here, have you ever hugged a tree or this large daisy-like flower faced uh, known as a sunflower? If not, you might want to give a thought. We all human beings owe our existence to plants and organisms that capture light. In fact, most life on earth is possible because the sun provides a continuous supply of energy to ecosystem. But organisms can't use light energy directly for their metabolic needs. Instead, it must be converted into a chemical energy to the process that is photosynthesis. So, all life needs a constant input of energy. So, I'll be giving you a little bit of introduction of this topic. Then comes autotrophs. So, autotrophs are the producers in the food chain. They create their own nutrients and energy and they get their energy from sunlight. Then there is one other type that is heterotrophs. They get their energy from eating others. For instance, dogs, birds, because they are known as the consumers. They consume the producers. Here, we will learn that how does plants make their own food. So it is with the help of a process known as photosynthesis, in which light energy is converted to chemical energy in the form of sugars. Some terms included in this session, included in this topic, that is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the name of the green pigment that plants use to make food during a process called photosynthesis. Next term is chloroplast. A chloroplast is a type of plastid that serves as the site of photosynthesis. 
the process by which energy from the sun is converted into chemical energy. Then comes cellular respiration. A cellular respiration is the process by which organisms combine oxygen with foodstuff molecules. And there are some products of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis converts carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and glucose is used as a food by the plant and oxygen is a byproduct. So some these are some of the terms which will be included further in this course. So the learning objectives that the students are going to learn in the whole course is that by the end of the lesson students will be able to define the term photosynthesis. By the end of the lesson students will be able to compare two different terms chlorophyll and chloroplast photosynthesis and respiration. By the end of the lesson, students will be able to predict why the products of photosynthesis are essential for cellular respiration. So these are some of the objectives that students will be going to learn in this course. Thank you.